cricket up. I would. <laughs> once, once I cricket up, always I cricket. Oh yes, okay, fine. I mean. All right. So, <laughs> when did you start? Well, I, I really started um, when I was about ten years old. Um, where I went to in my prep school years, the only thing we had there was football. My, my school was next door to the St. Andrew Girls School. So the only thing that we could do was to play football over their hockey, hockey ground. Um, my father tried his very best because he was a very keen cricketer. Um, in fact, he won the bowling averages in the minor cup for Kensington in 1917, I think it was. There, was a, there used to be a, a board in, in the pavilion at Kensington uh, that had him on it, 1917 um, minor cup bowling winner. Um, anyway, so he tried his best, but it's not until I went to Wilmers in 1944 when the, I, I encountered the wonderful house system that they had. Um, they had A, B, C. C were for the under 12s and um, B was for the under 16s and then A was for the, for the um, over, over 16s. Um, and although I knew nothing about cricket at all at the time, um, it suddenly gripped me and, and I, I, I couldn't get rid of it. And I think that my discovery of cricket um, spoiled my, 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 the rest of my, um, my lessons at, at Wilmers. I, I think I went from, from not too bad to very bad. <laughs> and um, I had a lot of fellows around who, who were equally um, interested in cricket. And so we built, we built quite a, a, a good um, background in, in the game, um, read a lot. Um, I read as much as I could at the time. Um, I remember there was a gentleman at Barclays Bank on Harbour Street that had a, some wonderful books, um, Fight for the Ashes, which was all about Bradman and Hammond and all of those great players. And I, my father knew him, and I was, he was able to borrow several of those books. And, you know, they were wonderful. I, I mean, I, I, I put aside my, my lesson books, my, my textbooks, to read these books. And um, they were really were, 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 made me even more conscious of cricket and what it, what it was about um, and you know reading about Bradman and, and Headley and Hammond and these fellows it, it really it really sort of it, it made me so anxious now to get into cricket on my own and try my best to see how far I could reach and um, as it was um, at Wilmers as I said we had a wonderful um, house system and um, I, I never forget um, the f one of the f ma first matches I played in, in, in C Division. It must have been the same year I went to Wilmers. Um, I didn't know anything about the laws. And we were playing a game, a, a house match. And I was a non striker batsman. And I was, um, the, the ball was played back up the, up the, the, the pitch. And I pushed my bat back into my crease because I was a non-striker and I hit the wicket and the bales went and I said to the umpire, who was a, 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 a first 11 player, um, he was Leslie Cole. He was, um, all of the, our, our first 11 fellows used to, used to umpire these matches. And I said to him, um, am I out? And he laughed for about five minutes. He couldn't stop laughing. He says, of course not. But that was when to see that, to, to show that I, I really had no idea about the laws of the game. But over time, you know, got, played a lot of the cricket, the, the house cricket, and um, even in, in the lunch hours at, at, at Wilmers, 
uh, up at the um, what we call the Fort Eleven pitch, which is next to Michael. Um, we used to play. We used to play uh, with a rubber ball um, and bowl for bat. So you know, it was. I I just got interested so so quickly in in cricket, and um, as I say, my schoolwork went to hell. <laughs> Why cricket though? Why not football? Well, I don't know. I, 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 that's a very good question because that's the only game that I ever played at prep school. Football and the St. Andrew Girls School um, hockey field. But when I, when I, when I found cricket, um, everything went out the door. I mean, I still played football as well as I could. Um, I, played, I played all the games, hockey and, and tennis and whatnot. Um, and and I think that's what I went to Wilmers for to play sport. To be honest, <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, it was it was very very. Um, it, it, I don't know. It just captured me. That that's all I can tell you. Um, and um, it 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 certainly proved to be a good selection by me, in spite of the, the failures in maths and Spanish and all of those things. <laughs> so, who actually taught you cricket, or did you learn by yourself? Yeah, by watching. I, I remember. I remember. Um, of course, I, I said I read a lot of these books, um, and um, I, I think it was 1946. Yes, Trinidad came out here, and um, I went. By this time now, it, I, I had been at Wilmers for two years and I really was very, very keen on cricket. And so I went to, 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 to these matches at Sabina Park. I think Kingston Club brought down Queen's Park from Trinidad, but Queen's Park included quite a few of their, of their um, Trinidad first 11. Um, so it was, it was Jeff Stallmeyer, Jerry Gomez, Andy Gantone, uh, Rupert Tang Tune, Pryor Jones, uh, Wilfred Ferguson, all of these fellows um, were, were there. And so with my, with, with my sandwiches and my lemonade, I went and sat in the, in the bleachers at Sabina. And in those days, there really were bleachers. There were no covered, the only covered thing was the grandstand, which I couldn't um, get into. So I spent the days Sitting on the bleachers, watching watching these fellows play cricket. I mean, George Headley, um, George Headley played, and um, a lot of Ken Rickards, J.K. Holt, as young men. And the you know one of the very um, one of the very amazing things that I found was that the same scores that that um, J.K. and Ken made in, the, in that first match against Trinidad were the same scores they made in the test match, um, their, their, their test match, um, first test matches. It's the most amazing. JK got 94 against the Trinidad and he got 94 against England. And Ken Rickards made 67 against, um, against Trinidad and he made 67 in his first test match. I, I thought it was quite a, a, a coincidence and a very, you know, it's very worthwhile thing to, 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 to look up. Was, was there a school um, by cricket at that time? Oh, yes. Yes, we had Colts cricket for the under-15s and junior Colts, I'm sorry. Junior Colts for the under-14s and, and Colts for the under-16s and then the Sunlight. And they also had a second 11. Um, I, I remember so well uh, when I was a youngster at Wilmers. There were five we, on, a, on an afternoon when when um, all of us were to, to go and play some cricket. There were five elevens at the time, so we had about a um, hundred a hundred fellows playing cricket um, after school in, in, in some afternoons, and. Um, that was to me wonderful because I enjoyed nothing better than than playing a game of cricket, you know.
Did, did you play cricket for Woolmars? Yes, I certainly did. I, I played Colts, junior Colts, I played Colts. And um, then Jerry Alexander, who was um, our, our, my house, house captain, Harrison House, um, he, he, he left school in 1947. And then we had, we had um, trials for the, for the, um, for the coming, coming season, for 1948. And um, my, my opponent behind the wicket was Eddie Siago, um, who I think wrote in his book that, that Alexander had, had passed the crown to him. But I, I rather, rather thought that Eddie was uh, forgetful, a little forgetful, um, because uh, I succeeded Jerry. And um, we had, you know, we had a lovely, um, a lovely, a lovely team, and we played. Of course, in those days, in those days, the only, the only Sunlight Cup people were all the Kingston, the Kingston, um, Kingston teams, with the exception of what is now San Diego, in Spanish Town, that used to be Beckford and Smith, and I think I think Joe Henry, um, the 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 present minister. Um, I think he played against me, against Wilmers, um, for, for, for Beckford and Smith. So, you know, and we, we, um, we thoroughly enjoyed the, the cricket and um, we had some, Wilmers, Wilmers produced, in fact, Wilmers produced five West Indies wicket keepers, um, starting with Carl, with Carl Nunes, um, Jerry Alexander, um, myself, uh, um, Jeffrey Dujon and um, Carlton Ball. I think it's a record, but I don't know. <laughs> I'd have to leave it to the to the fellows who go into those things. What was your most memorable um, schoolboy cricket match? Well, I think the most memorable of, of mine was playing against Kingston College um, in 1950. I think it was 1950. Um, when uh, at, at Woolmers, we, we played Kingston College. It was, of course, I think those those were the two, the two um, we were vying for the for sunlight thing, and um, uh, I made a, I got a hundred. I made a hundred, and we won the match, and so we eventually won the sunlight cup, which of course was was what we were all aiming for. Um, but you know, it was all. It, it, Kingston College had a very, very good team, a very powerful team. They had, uh, as I remember it, um, Freddie Green was one of the openers. Um, Collie Smith, who played for the West Indies with great, great renown, um, Collie was there. Johnny McLeod, who was a Jamaican batsman. Um, so uh, D. P. Beckford Jr. His father used to play for Jamaica, and I think may, may have played for the West Indies. I'm not quite sure, but they had a very strong team, and um, we managed through through. We, I think we made 178. These things I can't forget, you know. And they made 178, of which I got 110, um, and then Reggie Scarlett uh, was was a very fine off spinner um, in his career. Um, he got a f quite a few wickets, and um, we managed to beat KC. And and as such, we we were the um, Sunlight Cup champions for the for the year. So you're the one that destroyed KC. I've heard about you. <laughs> well, it, as I said, um, a lot of KC old P old boys are, are very upset with me. I know that. Maybe you're one of them. I don't know. <laughs> But <laughs> but it was it was quite a thing. It was it was a a, a great um, obviously a, a, it's a great a great thing the first to have, to have won the sunlight, and I think the following year we won the minor cup. In those days, schools used to um, the schools used to play the Kingston schools used to play against Kingston Club, Melbourne and Kensington. Those clubs played 
in the minor cup against the schools. And schools were allowed to play masters who were cricketers in themselves. I remember we, we had, um, I think, uh, uh, Don Bogle, who, who was a, a Sunlight Cup cricketer in his day, um, he, had, he had left school and came back as a, as a master, and he was able to play for us. And um, there were, there were other, other, um, other masters from JC um, who, who played f for them. And of course, the, the clubs, the clubs um, gave, us, gave us very good um, competition. I must say that we were very, very fortunate to beat a few of the clubs, which we all, we all were very happy about. So that is schoolboy cricket in a nutshell for you. So uh, tell me now, when did you, after you left school, how did that go in terms of cricket? Well, before I left school, I think I, I think it was 1947 or 48, somewhere around 48 there. Um, Reggie Scarlett and myself were invited by Johnny Groves, the captain of Kingston Club, to, to join Kingston as associate members, which we did. And we had a wonderful op a, a opportunity. We were welcomed by all the, the older members and we, we learned a lot of cricket from some of the old fellas, um, the older fellas, I shouldn't call them old fellas. <laughs> and, um, you know, from then we, we, um, we, we, after a couple of years playing junior cup for Kingston, we we graduated to the to the senior cup team, and um, I never forget. I must I must tell you this is one of the things that Reggie never let me forget was that in in 19, 1951 it was I think nineteen fifty one yes it was a thing either nineteen fifty or fifty one we were both selected to play for the Kingston Club senior cup team as as youngsters you know. Unfortunately, the match that was that was due to start against Wembley at Semina Park was the twelfth of August. I was I I, I adored right arm bird shooting in those days because my brother was one, and a lot of my my um, older friends were were um, were involved in bird shooting. August the twelfth was the start of the bird shooting season in those days. And I, I told the captain, Mr. Groves, I said, I'm sorry, I can't play. I have to go shooting, bird shooting. And Reggie has never let me. Reggie, Reggie, unfortunately, is no longer with us. He was a dear friend of mine from Wilmer's days. And he never, ever let me forget that. He said, you must be crazy. <laughs> so anyway, I... I Eventually got my got my my um, my chance in senior cup, um, the, the, the 1952, and um, we had a young man from St George's College, who had a leg spinner, whose father was a former West, West Indies player, and his name was Hal Scott. His father was O. C. Tommy Scott, who was a, a, the leg spinner for the West Indies at one stage. And he was in St. George's, but they, he couldn't get on to the couldn't get on to the St. George's um, Sunlight Cup team, and we had him playing for us in the Senior Cup, and he was a very fine bowler, extremely fine bowler. Um, I enjoyed keeping wicket to him. Um, he spun the ball a lot, as did Reggie, so it was really something. Um, that, you know, it was an enjoyable experience. To keep wicket to the both of them because they were they were always giving the batsmen some worries, you know. Uh, so anyway, so so um, eventually St George's came to the came to the suddenly bright idea why well, we should have him on our Sunlight Cup team. <laughs> so um, so so Scotty was was put on the. I think I think what what happened was that his. The, the, the person who would have taken his or, or would have bow leg spin in those days for St. George's was Horace Tuller. 
So that's probably why Hal didn't get into the to the St. George's um, Sunday Cup team. But it, it, we had a wonderful time. The three youngsters, Reggie, Reggie, Scotty, and myself, um, we, we really enjoyed the the experience of, of, of senior cup cricket. And, you know, and, and the older fellas on the, on the, in the club went out of their way to make us feel at, at home and comfortable. And it was a great experience. And I, I learned so much from some of the some of those the older fellows there because we used to go to practice in the afternoon at, at Savannah and um, we, we got a lot of, of, of help from the, the, the cricketers of the day at, at, at Savannah and, and eventually um, in, in 1951 um, after the tour of Australia Alan Ray came back to, to Jamaica having passed his legal exams. He had been to Australia in 1951, 50, 51, and um, he, he, was, he was a, a mentor. We, we learned so much from him, although he was a very strict task master. He, he didn't fool around. And um, we, we learned a heck of a lot from him. I remember when he was coming back from England in 1950, 52, I think it was, after getting passing his legal exams. Johnny Groves decided to take the youngsters to the Palisades Airport. If you, and we were lined up and as if we were meeting royalty. And Alan came down the line and we shook hands. Scotty, Reggie Scarlett, Boris Smith, myself, um, and a couple of other youngsters. Um, and we were thrilled because we'd never, you know, meeting meeting a, a West Indies cricketer, and he, and Alan took took us under his wing, so to speak, and um, you know, I, I I learned so much from him, and so did a lot of a, a lot of the other youngsters. Batsman or wicketkeeper? Well, I was certainly wicketkeeper. First and foremost, I was a wicketkeeper. Um, as I said before, you know, we, we, I enjoyed it so much. I, I remember very clearly um, our coach, playing for, the, for our coach team, I was included as a batsman and um, I was not keeping wicket. And I, I went to Sabina Park in 1948 when the, the, the English team were, were in Jamaica. They were playing against the. Um, they were playing against Jamaica, and behind the wicket was one of the best that has ever been, in my opinion, and that was Godfrey Evans. And I got so interested in 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 watching him, that I sort of lost lost track of the other things that were happening because he was so alive. He bounced around. Um, he he tidied up all the bad throws. And he was just like a dynamo. And that thing caught my fancy. And I said, well, this is what I really want to be. Because I, you know, I had been in house cricket, bowling, which was very ordinary. But um, in those days, we played at Cavalier and the pitch was very rough and thing. So anything you bowl would shoot or... <laughs> um, so I, I got some wickets bowling. But having seen Ed Evans, I was con converted. I wanted to keep wicket, and eventually I got, I got into the to the Bulmers Colts eleven, fourteen fifty, um, um, would have been about fourteen years old, junior Colts I think it was, and I, I started to keep wicket, and um, you know I just never stopped after that. It was. One thing, uh, one thing after the other. Um, uh, eventually, I ended up, of course, keeping wicket for Kingston in the Senior Cup. And in 1954, um, England came to to the West Indies, and Ali Bins, who was the wicket keeper, um, he, Ali was from St George's. Ali, Ali, there were in those days when the Tory team came to the West Indies. They played two matches in, 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 in the main, 
in Guyana, Jamaica, um, Trinidad, um, and Barbados before, you know, before they would play a test match in those territories. Um, they always had two colony, what they call a colony match in those days. And in the first colony match at Sabina, Ali, Ali broke his finger. And I was called in to the second match at Melbourne, Melbourne Park, which is um, uh, where Kingston College has a, a, a branch on, on uh, Edison Road. And um, so I, I, was, I, was, I was introduced to the big cricket in 19, at that time, and I had a wonderful, I thought I, thought I had a, a, a really a good match. Um, I took a couple of catches and I, I made about, I made a 20 something batting at number 10. And you know, I, I, I enjoyed it, the, the experience. Um, but unfortunately, after that, it took a hell of a long time for me to get back into the top of the line cricket. <clears throat> um, I, I remember very well the, um, in, in, 19, in 1956, I, I Cold Steam went to Antigua and we were supposed to play against the, the Leeward Islands and in came a Guyana team, full, full Guyana team. And we were a Cold Steam. Um, and to me, that was a, a really um, wonderful experience. And I, I, I eventually got selected in the, in the um, what would it have been now, October, to go down to, to Guyana with the Jamaica team. I was informed that I was the wicketkeeper. And I remember so vividly going down there, we practiced, and, and, and um, Collie Smith, J.K. Holt, and I were rooming. And the morning of the match, I can well remember, Alan Ray, the captain, came in the room and, and said, um, okay, fellas, we are leaving at nine o'clock or 10, 9.30, whatever. And he says, um, Hendrix, you're resting. That was a bit of a, you know, I, I, I sort of did a double take. I said, okay, sir. Um, and I subsequently, I subsequently found out from, from Barclay Gaskin, who was the Guyana representative on the West Indies Cricket Board at the time, and who, <clears throat> sorry, who met Alan at the airport and asked him about this young fellow, Hendrix. And, um, oh, and uh, uh, he had apparently, Clifford McWatt, who was a West Indies thing, had seen, had played against me in Antigua that, that summer and um, had come back and told Barclay, I saw, he saw a youngster that was very promising, you know? So Barclay, Barclay was looking forward to, to seeing, seeing me keep wicket. And Alan told him, he said, no, he won't be playing in the first match, he played in the second match. There were, in those days, there were four teams. So A played B, C played D, and the two winners played off. So um, we were playing Guyana, in the first match. And Barclay told Alan, he says, then I won't see him because you can't beat Guyana. <laughs> and of course, in those days, Guyana had some wonderful young players. Um, Rohan Kanhai and, and Joe Solomon. And, you know, there were, Lance Gibbs was a youngster on, the, on that team. Um, and so said, so done. We, they, I think they made, I know Rohan made a hundred and something. Um, they made 600 and odd runs against us. Wow. And we, in those days, if you, if you, if you lost in first innings and the, the match was a draw, you were automatically out. Because five days, I think it was five days they played and um, it was a lot of batting. I mean, 600, 600 runs. So anyhow, um, I, I did not get the chance. Um, Ali was Ali Bins was was a big keeper, and um, at the end of the the last day, the fifth day, um, we were out at tea just before tea on the last day, and there was a half over and a half of cricket left, and 
I then asked Clyde Walker, who was captaining, um, captaining Guyana at the time. He was there in a coaching, coaching, um, coaching job. Um, if, if, if he would allow me to keep wicket, because Ali Bins had been given out, hit wicket. Oh, no. It had been given out, hit the ball twice. Because the ball was rolling back to his wicket, and quite, quite right, he was able to stop it with the bat. The bowler appealed and the umpire gave him out, hit the ball twice, or hit the ball or something. And so there was a big furore about that. And, and, and the press, of course, were all around the thing. So Alan, Alan decided that the best place for him, for, for, for Ali, would be back at the hotel, where the, the press couldn't get hold of him, you know. And so I was the wicket keeper, so he went and asked Clyde if I could keep. And Clyde said, yes, man, sure, sure. And I asked, an hour and a half, I think it was. So I did. But Barclay Gaskin, at that time, said that he did not want to see Hendrix because he could either be very good or he could be very bad, having not played for five days. And, was, you know, um, and he, he left the ground. He would not stay. Anyway, I kept for the hour and a half, and that was the end of that. And I get, got back to Jamaica, and the chairman of selectors at the time was Cecil Marley. And Cecil's first question to me was, were you, were you injured? And I said, no, sir, I was fit as a fiddle. And he said, oh, oh, interesting. And that was the end of that. <laughs> um, but I, I'm sure as, as chairman of the selectors who had selected me as a keeper, I'm sure that he was a little, uh, wanted to get some explanation from the, the top boy. Sidney Abrams was the manager and Alan was, of course, the captain. So I don't know whatever happened after that. But that's about, <laughs> that was about my, my um, sort of experience at that time. And is that the following year, 1957, was a, a tour by the West Indies to England. And they, 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 they were having trials in Trinidad in the, in the, I think it was in January of, of, of um, January, February of, of, of 57. So I, and I was invited. And so were about three, other, three or four other wicket keepers. Um, I remember um, a fellow called Reed from, 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 from the, I think he was from the Leewoods. Reed, Ali Bins, um, De Pisa from Barbados. Um, there were quite a few of us. And um, De Pisa, before the matches started, the Pisa went and signed a contract for, for, for Scotland, to play in Scotland. So he, he was out of it. And um, there was, I think we were left with Reed, Reed, and then Alexander, Jerry was there. Reed, he had just come back from Cambridge, where he did his veterinary, veterinary work. And um, they included him, because he was, of course, kept wicket and played for, for Cambridge. So um, there were there were there were four or five keepers, and anyway, uh, the Pisa left, and um, I, Jerry, and I, and and Reed, and and um, I think that was it. It, it. it eventually ended up with with three. Ali, I think, played a bit too, but something happened to his finger or something, and. Um, they, uh, they, it was, it was a, I, in my view, it was a dog-eat-dog -dog, um, thing because it was trials for a tour of England, you know? And um, I was the only person on the whole, the whole of the, the, the two matches that never got a bat. I kept wicket for both sides in one, in, at one, one time, one innings, and it was, I don't know, I, I got so fed up with it. Um, uh, and I, I, when Cecil Marley said to me, I'm going home on this, on this Sunday, um, you, you won't, because I'd hurt my finger. And he, he said, you can, you know, we can. so I said, yeah, I want to go back to Jamaica. And so back to, to came back. And, you know, funnily enough, I, I was, I, I felt I had a chance. Um, 
to go as the reserve keeper there. And when the team was announced, they had selected Rohan Kanhai as the reserve keeper. And I remember driving around Kingston, crying my heart out with disappointment that I hadn't got a game. <laughs> it was quite a thing. Um, I went, I mean, this must have happened. It must have gone on for maybe 15 minutes and so, and then I decided, you're, you're being stupid now, come on. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I, went, I, I pulled myself together and forgot about it, you know. But it was always on my mind and that I, I wanted to, to get to the West Indies team. And fortunately, next year, which was 1958, I was selected to go to India. Um, and, and, and Jerry Alexander was, was the captain. So that took care of me. I wouldn't be playing any test matches. But I went on the tour and I enjoyed it immensely. You can imagine the, 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 the feeling of, of touring, in, touring India, all over India. We were there for, we got there in, in early November and didn't leave there until Feb, sometime in the end of February or March, just early March. And then we went on to Pakistan for another six weeks or so. And I found it a, a wonderful, um, thing for me as in my sort of my trying to get to the top of you know as far up as I could get as a wing keeper and um, it was it was it was a wonderful experience not only not only from the cricket but actually seeing India um, I mean sometimes we, we traveled huge distances I remember one place we were going we, play, we spent two days on a train um, uh, in those days, it very, very rarely did you ever get an aeroplane taking you. I think one aeroplane took us from, from, from um, Calcutta to Madras. I think that was one of the only airplane rides we had during that tour, except for um, a match we had in, um, a match we had in, um, oh no, the tea play, the, the tea, Assam. Uh, Assam. We, we had a match in Assam, which we had to go across a, de a, a, a jungle to get to from, from Calcutta. And when I got in the plane, I was very, very nervous because some of the, 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 the you could see, you didn't have to use a window to see outside. You could, look, you could look through some part of the body and see outside. And we were going over this, this jungle. And anyway, we arrived in, in Assam and it was lovely. It was. It, it reminded me a bit of England, the, the the whole the atmosphere and everything. And anyway, we came back. Must must be the same plane, I guess. And then we went on down to 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 Madras. The next thing, about two weeks later, we heard that the aeroplane had crashed in the jungle, going to Assam. So you know, we said, well, boy, thank God for that. <laughs> we we got hold of that. Uh, but um, so it was. It was a wonderful experience, and um, you know, the, the the next year, the next year was one of the, I think, to me, the the the, the greatest test match cricket that was ever played up to that stage, or even after that. Nineteen sixty, we were West Indies were selected to go to Australia. Frank Worrell now had taken over the, the captaincy. And I must go back and one of my dearest friends who, who played, was, was in India, who I roomed with most of the time, Collie Smith was a wonderful young man. He really was terrific. If a, if a shirt came off your, your, your if, a, if a, a button came off your shirt, he was the first one, come, let me do that for you. And he would throw it back on. He was wonderful. And um, he had a, 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 this, a terrible accident in England when they ran into the back of a, of, a, of a truck that had no lights on, and it was in the night. And it was 
because Carly and I had been corresponding. He was in England playing for one of the Lancashire clubs. And I was, of course, working at Adolf Levy at the time. And we used to get letters, letters we used to, to, to communicate with each other. So I knew Carly very, very well. And as I said to you, we, we roomed in India. And um, we were, he wrote to me, I remember this, about the, maybe the August, September of, the 90, of 1960, looking forward to the tour of Australia and you know, how, you know, it would be nice to be together again and blah, 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 blah. And then the terrible accident happened and we lost, we lost Collie, which was a, a, a really, a, a terrible blow, um, I think all around. Not only to the cricket, but to the people around Collie's family and people that, he, you know, he was, he was revered. He was a wonderful little, little fella, very little. Cool. So anyway, um, that, that was a dampener on me because I really I got very close to Carly as far as all cricket and things are concerned, you know. Anyway, we went to, we went to Australia and it was, to me, the, one of the best, um, I think one of the, the, the most successful test tours of all times. Um, I remember the last day, of the last test match in, in Melbourne, the last, I think over the weekend, I think it was the, was the must have been the Saturday afternoon. Um, there were 92,000 people at the test match in Melbourne. And we had, we had, I think the West Indies had done so very well as far as the, the, the public relations, the human relations with the Australians and the end of the tour, even, Australia, even though Australia won, I think 2-1, one, one tie, that famous tie test, um, there were a quarter of a million Australians who lie in the streets of Melbourne when we were leaving. It was one of the most touching events of my cricket career because I don't think there was a dry eye anywhere. Um, when we were we were going through on the cars and the open cars, you know, you sat and you sat at the thing and you waved. And, but people, or West Indies cricketers, were so touched by the love that came out of the the the, the crowds. I mean, they lined the streets, you know, and, and they sang, "Will your name come back again?" It was it was a wonderful experience, and as I say, I don't think there was a dry eye with anybody, any of the players. It was wonderful. You were a young man then. What were your parents saying about all of this? Oh, they were very, very supportive. Absolutely. I mean, my father was a he loved cricket, and um, I mean, he would come to senior cup matches. Um, when Kingston were playing, I was there, he would, he would be there. I go and sit in the stand because he was not a member of Kingston. And Alan Ray used to go over to the grandstand. In those days, I had the, the, the grandstand beside the pavilion and would invite him into the pavilion. But there was, a little, there was a little reason for that, I must tell you, because I remember, I remember going to a cricket match um, in 19, I think it was against Trinidad, if I'm not mistaken, when the crowd was absolutely tremendous crowd, as, as, as much as the Sabana could hold at the time, you see. And we couldn't find anywhere um, to, to go and, and, and sit. In fact, um, we went, we were under the grandstand looking through the fence at the cricket. And I don't know, what, I don't know how it happened from there. But Daddy said, well, come on, let's, let's go and sit in the, in the pavilion. And we went and sat in the pavilion. And about two minutes after we sat down, a, 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 a steward came, asked us, um, are we members? And Daddy said, no, I'm not a member. So he said, well, I'm sorry, but we, we asked you to leave. And we were put out of it is a, a factual thing. We were put out of the of, of the pavilion, 
There's one story that is going around. I remember it. You got hit with a cricket ball. And you pass and you yeah, you're injured. Yes. In Barbados. Barbados in, in, in um, 1965, um, I was batting and Graham McKenzie was bowling for Australia and um, the ball hit a, hit a, I think, this is me, hit a part of the pitch that had broke. It was about the fifth day or fourth, fourth day or something and came up steeply, it rose steeply and I got hit behind my ear and the bone behind my ear. And um, it was uh, very painful, I must admit, very painful. <laughs> and uh, it put me in hospital for a few days. But um, so, what what happened? What happened to you when you were in hospital and all of that? Well, it it was concussion. Um, I, I was I was badly concussed, um, and I remember uh, well two days after uh, two days in there, I, I got up to walk. Oh, and I felt as if I was on a ship that was in, in, in stormy seas. It was very, very um, shaky. And so I, 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 not a few days, um, I was in, and eventually the, the, um, it, it passed, you know. I, but I had missed out. The fifth test was in Trinidad, and of course I, I wouldn't even, I missed out on that. So, what is the most memorable um, test cricket match that you have played? Wow. There was or two or three. There were several of them. I don't know. I, well, the one that I got hit down is is one I'll never forget. <laughs> but um, it was it was quite. Um, no, the, the, I mean, when you play a test match, it's it's something above and beyond what you would you know how you would feel. At least I did, and. Of course, it, the fellows that were, uh, I had the, the, the good fortune to be, to be um, around, the, the Gary Sobers and the Lance Gibbs and the Wes Halls, um, Seymour Nurse, who I considered one of the great batsmen of West Indies of all time, of, of one of our great batsmen. Um, you know, it was, it, was, it was a wonderful experience. And, um, the camaraderie was excellent. And you know, going out on the field with Gary Sobers made one feel I'm going out with 13 men because Sobe could do everything. Bat field, bowl, he bowled orthodox left hand, he bowled the, the um, what they call the Chinaman, Googly, and he was a magnificent fieldsman. Um, and I mean, I, I, I He's the best player, the best batsman I've ever seen. And certainly the best all round I've ever seen. I heard them trying to equate another fellow recently um, from, from as, as, as good as Sobers. And I laugh at it. I have to laugh because there's no way, no way anyone, anyone could equal Sobers all round skills um, at cricket. He, he's the best batsman I've ever seen. Certainly one of the greatest fieldsmen you ever want to see. He's close up, catching positions. And of course, his, his bowling was, was, was very, very good. So I am always a fan. <laughs> who, else, who else do you remember from those days that, you know, they were impressive, right? Well, it was a, I mean, Seymour Nurse was a, was a, was a, I, in my view, Seymour Nurse was a, was a wonderful player. Um, um, Lance was a, was a, was a, again, a great bowler. Wes Hall, Charlie Griffith. Um, I, I don't know, in those days, I mean, there was Joe Solomon, who just unfortunately left us. Um, running out the, the, the batsmen in this tight test when they hitting the, the, from cover, hitting the wicket direct twice. Um, you know, those are the things that can never be forgotten. Wonderful things. And, you know, the, the, the test in, 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 in Brisbane there, the tie test, was a nail biter the whole way, you know? I remember sitting with Sir Donald Bradman, the great Bradman, who we had a bet 
that, that he said Australia will win. And I said, no, 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 West Indies, because we had them 90, I think this is correct, if somebody can check it, if the 90 something for five or six. And Davidson and Benno had a partnership. But at that stage, it would be better. And I said, no, we can't. And at the end of it, um, we to the time. 2.30, I think it was 2.32 all at the end. I think that was, what was the, um, with Joe Solomon um, starring in the runouts of, 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 of two of the Australian batsmen at the very crucial time, you know. One day cricket. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to, to, I'm getting to a little more comfortable with 50 over, but I can't manage the 20 over. As, as a friend of mine, Raman Subaru, an English opening batsman, described it, he says, it's not cricket, it's crack it. He says, it's crack it, that's all they do. <laughs> so I, I'm in agreement with that. I, I don't, I'm not a fan of 20, 20 over cricket. But I'm getting to more to, um, to, to, you know, accept 50 over cricket. But I don't think there's anything that can beat test cricket. I think that is the ultimate and um, I'm, I'm very, I, I cannot understand some players who feel more comfortable playing the shorter game than playing test cricket because, you know, it's, it's the ultimate. What about night cricket? Well, I, 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 I don't know, uh, to be honest, I, we never had any night cricket, um, of course. Um, we, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know how the players sometimes I hear them talking about losing the ball in the lights or something like that. And I don't know. I, I really, as I say, I have no experience playing cricket at night, at the night, in night, night cricket with lights. What about the uniform now? I mean, traditionally, test cricket, you were in white. Definitely. Well, we still are, but they have the, a number, a huge number painted on the back of the players' shirts. I would have hated to have had my lovely violet shirts with, printed with a big number in the back. I, I would never have liked that. Thank God I played when I did, you hear? <laughs> have you been to any matches? When last have you been to a match, a cricket match? The last time we had a match out here, which was against, I think, the Irish. Uh, many years ago, so I was wondering whether we are still in the West Indies Cricket Board, uh, whether we have been demoted, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, everything that I see now practically is played in Antigua. Uh, they, they, played in, they played test match, two test matches in Dominica, both of which, one against England and one against India, both of which finished in two days, a test match. Five day test match. So if you could do it all over again, would you change anything? Definitely not. No, I, I don't think I would. I think I've been, I've been terrifically lucky um, with how things went with me. I think I, I, I enjoyed every moment of it, except one or two times, the time I told you in 57 when I did not get selected to go to, to England. But otherwise, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's the greatest game in the world. And I'm so disappointed that in Jamaica, we have been left in the lurch. We, we, we have no, no, not even, not even the, um, the, the, local, the West Indies matches. We, we don't seem to get any. I remember there was some, a year, couple of years, a few years ago, when the time you no know, Jamaica was to get their their home matches in the in the um, in the not the Shed Shield because that is that is no longer. But when it, those matches, the first class matches in Jamaica, the West Indies first class, we were to get five four, five matches. What do you think they did? They played two in Jamaica and three in Miami, which. I can't see how that could have been a been a home match for Jamaica. <laughs> anyway, that's that's how things went. Anything else you want to tell me? No, just 
to you wrap know, up. It's been, it's been quite a... I, I hope I'm not boring you. No, 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 um, it's quite interesting. I'm not boring you, but, um, you know, I've just... That's just a, a synopsis of my, of my love for cricket and, and how, you know, how it, it helped me a lot, helped me greatly. I can't, I can't complain. Thank <laughs> you.